I got a lot of requests to explain how to make this live feed camera for a shoot house, so let's do this. So go into the editor and find some sort of shoot house assets or a shoot house if you're using MPG kill house assets like me. I'm gonna put a link to the mod in the description because it's pretty brilliant. And of course, place some targets for your guys to shoot at. You know, it's a shoot house, it's a bunch of targets, so go wild. You can also add some assets like uh, some, you know, sofas and desks and things like that that make this a bit more lively to uh, some more assets to distract your, your people. And once you're happy, let's go and choose some cameras. I mean, you don't need to do that. I did it because it just looks nicer. It's a nice representation that there are actually cameras in the shoot house, but you don't need that at all. You're just telling your men that they are being watched and maybe they don't like it. Now. Maybe they do. I ended up adding seven of them to the map, of, which is quite a lot more than I probably should, but hell yeah, why not? It's also good to save your mission often, so do that very quick, make sure you save it. I'm gonna need it in a second. And in your assets tab, go ahead to the modules and logic and find a game logic object. We're gonna use it as a reference to where our camera should be spawned. So place it down and try your best to align it with the lens of the camera, basically where you want the camera lens to be, where you want to be looking from, right? Now, what you wanna do is make sure that the green arrow is pointing exactly where the camera is pointing. But uh, right now my editor is preset to the world coordinate space. If you click that button, it will actually make it uh, display the coordinates in the model space. So now you can align it properly. And once you're happy with the results, just make sure you give it a name. We're gonna have to give it a name to reference that in the script later as a variable. So let's call it camera source one. And just copy and paste its asset and just do it for the rest of the cameras, all of them. Just go ahead, copy and paste and rotate a line and you should be good. Now it's time for the Captain Price desk. So go ahead and place it. This is where you're going to be sitting and judging everyone from. Uh, place that in some screens. I have seven cameras. I place three sets of, you know, double screens and then also laptop. And then this computer with three screens that I'm going to use for helmet cameras. I ended up adding two more screens actually to the big setup. Just made more sense to me. Anyways, then you go to the attributes of each of them and you have to change the texture. So you want to tell it to actually render not a color, but a feed. From a camera so you have to use the rtt that means render to texture i believe and that tells it basically to render from a live feed from the game to, into that screen essentially into the texture and it needs a unique name each one of them will have like a shoot house camera one two three four five six seven names so just do that remember that they have to be all unique and of course i need to chair like a proper boss so yeah let's go now uh, let's head on to the mission folder and make a file called initcamera.sqf. So now we can actually reference the screen source game logic objects with variables that we just called them right in the editor. So we're gonna pair it up with the screen texture name that we used in the you know screen texture field, and we can then use it as a reference and call a script to create the camera and link them both together from it using a, a tuple. Yep, it's a word. Is this data structure where each position in the array references some information so we can pass the arguments this way. Doesn't matter. Let's go. If you want to call a script with those arguments, you just use execvm and then name or path to the script. So let's make this one create shoot house camera.sqf. Of course, these are the parameters we just passed. PAP target being the texture name and source being the game logic object. And now if we can create, I'm just making a new camera at position 000, assigning it to the camera object variable. And we can set the direction of the camera to be the same direction as the game logic object that we just spawned in the editor. That's why we align the green arrow. And with camera effects, we can basically tell it to render to that particular texture that we are referencing, right? That we set on our screens. I'm not sure what exactly the other two parameters do. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm gonna have to read up on that. 
Last but not least, we also have to set the location of our camera to be the same as the game logic, right? So you can get it through set pulse ATL being above terrain level, uh, just reference the same position above terrain level as the game logic object has. Then I remembered I should actually set the actual FOV of the camera as well. So don't forget to do it. It's important. Um, I set it initially to 0 0.7, but then I thought, okay, let's see what's going to happen if I set it to 1. It's basically how much field of view your camera is going to have. I mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? And in the cameras, make sure you actually reference all of them, not just the one camera. So just copy and paste the same line, just change the names. Now, again, in the game, if you go to the laptop and you enter into its in the field some code, basically we want to create an action using an action command, of course, that when you select it, it will actually spawn the camera objects in the game. It will populate the feeds. Basically, it will execute all the logic that we just wrote in the scripts in our mission files. So go ahead and make it basically execute the init cameras of the SQF file. Oh, of course, you also need a character to play as. I'm going to use my units, you know, characters, um, just my spec ups, guys. Now, back in the game, for some reason, my laptop and my computer just fell from the desk. But it's no problem, I can use it from the floor, of course. Let's see what happens. I choose it and boom, it's uh, it's all blurry and it barely looks like uh, like a actual feed from the camera. To fix it, go to the screens again, go to the texture and set a size to 512 by 512. Uh, that's my fault. I, for some reason, left it out as 8 by 8 and that's not correct. So, yeah, if you try it again now, you will notice that it's, oh well, where's the laptop? There it is. You'll see that it's much better and cleaner, so it's uh, much more much easier to look at and it actually resembles some feed, so you can sit down and uh, appreciate your efforts. Okay, helmet cameras. Let's make a file. Create helmet camera that SQF. It's going to be very much the same. So you want to pass it the unit that you want to actually spawn the camera for. And then, of course, create a camera, same way as before, cam create. Now here's a cool fact. In Arma, you can actually get the vector of, of unit's eyes, of a person's eyes using eye direction command so if you do that you can get the direction that someone's looking at and you can set the same direction vector on the camera that you just spawned so they're both looking the same way now of course i forgot to pass the parameter for the texture name that we actually want to render to when we render the feed from the camera so let's do that real quick and of course we need to actually attach the camera to the head of the player so we're going to use the famous attach to command, passing the person, no offset, which part of the model to attach it to, of course head. The last parameter true means that it will follow the rotation on the head, so when they look around, the camera will actually follow as well. I'm also going to use the same offset as the CDEV helmet cameras use. Shout out to those guys, I'm going to put the link to the mod in the description below. But we of course need to go back to the game and place some actual, you know, people that we want to <laughs> test it on. So I'm going to give a name to the group. Call it Scorpion, give it a call name as well, it doesn't matter. Then I actually realized there's actually four of them and I only have three screens, so uh, one of them has to go. Goodbye. So of course we also need to set the textures on the screens of the small computer to actually display the feed from the camera. So I'm basically going to copy the lines over and I'm going to give those screens just different identifiers. And of course we have to give it an action, right? Which when selected will call our script to spawn the helmet camera and assign it to the feed. So for that reason, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the ID of the screen and select each person from that group and I will pass it to the script so that the script will now take those arguments and it will put them together and will spawn the camera. And of course I misspelled the name of the script, so yeah, camera, not cam. And now in the game I can start up the cameras inside of the shoot house. 
and then the helmet cameras and boom and there's only one of them so it seems there's a limit of eight picture in picture screens max and i have like 10 so but if i start the helmet cameras first you can see it works perfectly fine each screen is individual i can see the feeds from each soldier but it's of course ai so uh let's make it multiplayer friendly and that's easy. All you have to do is to make sure you are forcing every client to actually run exec VM by calling remote exec on exec VM. Zero means all clients. Last argument is for JAP player, it doesn't matter. And of course, the same thing goes for the computer for the handheld cameras. You, of course, have to make sure that we call remote exec. So if you run it in multiplayer, it will work just as fine. Just maybe have less than 10 cameras at once. So, yeah. Of course, I'm using AI here to record this video. I didn't get my friends to uh, help me out with the video right now. I'm trying to make them go into the shoot house, but it's AI. So uh, the results happen to be quite interesting. Yeah, just, no. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I apologize if I sound a bit weird, but I'm a bit ill. Leave a like if you liked the video and it helped you, or consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of this. And see you next time.